Yo Internet, Zeal here again. Um, uh, on my last video, I introduced some of the features of Visible 2. Um, this video is just to go over a bit more of a real world scenario. Um, uh, in the last video, it was just sort of throwing effects together to show that they work. And this one, um, this is more about actually making something look good, um, tying it to the music, and um, and also looking at some of the more advanced routing features in the Auto Connect system in Visible 2. Um, so I'm just going to play this and then I'll, uh, I'll um, go back over it and show you how everything's connected and everything's talking and what everything's doing. Um, so hopefully this works. Yeah, so, um, so that's sort of a, a an idea of what um, a set might look like um, using visible. So I'll I'll run through um, run through the setup here. Um, I'm going to turn preview windows on. Um, whenever you're in a performance situation with this software, it's best to turn preview windows off because you get um, a much better frame rate. So at the moment, with nothing happening, we're sitting, you know, around 50, 60 frames a second. If I pop this on, it's going to drop um, significantly because we've got so much happening in here. Um, so um, the one of the main inputs is this super player. Um, the super player here is um, playing this little drum pattern. Oh, struggling. Um, I'm actually going to turn these off just for 
is um, so down this side of the of the rack we've got um, a a super player holding some video clips on these on these MIDI notes um, and before the super player is a is a MIDI shuffler just to sort of make the beat a bit more interesting now down this side of the uh, of the track we've got a drum rack and so um, this MIDI note here happens to coincide with this MIDI note here so whenever there's a kick drum there'll be a dude and whenever there's a snare there'll be a bird and whenever there's that little symbol thing there'll be a cat um, and the cool thing is with the MIDI shuffler in front of it the beat sort of stays interesting and the visuals stay synced to it um, after that I've got this Super Bocosa the Super Bocosa is basically an all-round color corrector um, so I've just got that there to boost contrast and brightness a bit to make it a bit more punchy um, you can also use it to subtract colors to give a bit of a tint as well which is quite handy in a lot of, in a lot of um, situations um, all right, and here, this is sort of the hub of the track. This is a four mixer. You can have as many mixers as you want in a track, but I'm using four video sources, so um, I'm just using one mixer. Um, the four mixer takes makes use of the manual routing in Invisible. So you can see here, um, Super Player um, and and Super Bocosa are connected together by auto, which just means if they're next to each other, they'll see each other. Super Bocosa is coming out of video three, and that's coming in here in video three, which is actually track two. So if I turn this down, you'd see that's controlling that video source. Um, the next thing that's going on is this glockenspiel. So the glockenspiel is just a little um, arpeggiated pattern. Um, that's coming in on a MIDI grid, which just makes squares with MIDI notes. Um, then it's going through a Zeropa. So the Zeropa um, stands for Zoom, Rotate, and Panner. Um, and it's just sort of your all-round um, mirroring, zooming, stretching, panning, um, rotating effect for your basic um, sort of uh, rotation and translation needs. And then that's going into a two-toner just to make the squares blue because they're prettier um, and again this is using manual routing so this is coming out of video 6 and popping in here in track 4 in our mixer um, so then things get a little bit more interesting um, on this grand piano track let's uh, turn these up So this grand piano track, here we've got a, an instrument that I just pulled out of the live library, and a scope. Um, now the interesting thing about this scope effect is it's the only audio device in the suite um, at the time of recording this, um, So, and the rest are MIDI devices, so you can't actually drag an effect after the scope because the scope lives on an audio track and... Um, and the effects live on MIDI tracks, so you need to use manual routing in this case. So you can see I'm coming out of video one, and I've actually set up an entire track just for the scope effects. Let's pop this open. Um, so what's happening is the scope's coming in here into this collider effect, which just does sort of nice kaleidoscoping things. Um, then I've got a Zeropa again, and in this case the Zeropa's um, rotation parameter is being controlled by an LFO to make the thing rotate the whole time. The fisheye is a little bit more subtle. Um, the fisheye is there just to give it a bit of a bulge, so if I turn this off you can see there's not really a huge amount of difference, but um, it was just something I wanted to add in. And last is a feeder, so this generates trails. If I turn this off you can see that um, the scope is, is a lot drier. Um, this sort of uh, blends one frame with its previous frame to create these feedback trails. Now that whole thing is um, let me go. So again, manual routing. This is coming out of video five, 
um, coming in here in track one. And you can see track one here is actually um, mapped to um, the volume of the grand piano. So the scope of the grand piano will only be seen when the grand piano is playing, um, which I think ties the sound and the visuals together um, just that little bit more. So that's most of the stuff. Let's just get a video playing for this other example. Now this last, um, so the last track on the mixer is, I believe, I'll just turn this, uh, is the third track. So what's that? Third track, video four. So another cool thing about um, the auto connect system is it actually lets you split video off. So these two tracks here, you can see mixes coming out of stream 16. Um, but right here, this viewer is set to auto. So even if you route video out of one of these manual routing channels, you can still connect to it with auto, which means you can split this video off to go somewhere else and also send it out, in this case, to the viewer. Um, so that's exactly what I'm doing here to um, achieve some feedback effects. So what's happening is this is coming out of stream 16. I'm sending it over to this track. It's coming into a Zeropa. And the, so the Zeropa is taking the main output. Um, it's panning it a little bit. And it's uh, zooming it a little bit. You can see this can get some really cool effects. Um, and it's also um, colouring it a little bit with this RGB, which is an RGB offset. If I turn this off, you can see that's just your standard feedback. This just makes it look a bit prettier, or a little bit more interesting. Um, yep, feedback is great. Feedback is awesome. Um, and this feedback um, is tied to um, an envelope follower on this sound effect track. So what that means is whenever this sound effects make sound, we get some feedback. Um, so this is sort of the sound of feedback controlling video feedback, which um, sort of looks looks right, I think. Um, and that's really about it. That's that's this set. You, this didn't take me too long to throw together, and um, I've ended up with some very tightly synced visuals. And um, yeah. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Um, I'll put the link to Visible um, below this video. Um, so please go and download it. It's free. If you really like it, you can send me some cash in the with the donate button on the download page. Um, it requires uh, Mac 6.1 and Live 9, and it also needs to be the 32-bit version of Live 9. Um, and if you're on Windows, you're going to need the 32-bit version of QuickTime as well. Um, it will run on Live 8 with Mac 6, um, but that's not officially supported by Ableton, so your mileage may vary. Um, thanks for watching. I'll put some more videos up as uh, more features appear in the software. Um, hope you find it useful, and hope you make cool stuff with it. Thanks for watching.